Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Gil Tene. I'm going to be talking about what's new in the JVM in the Java SE8 platform. Um, and we're going to be talking specifically about the JVM, not the platform as a whole. Um, just a little background about me. I'm the CTO and one of the co-founders of Azul Systems. I've been working on JVMs and garbage collection for over a decade now. And this is some evidence of me playing with garbage collection in my kitchen. Uh, but I've actually done some real stuff like publish garbage collection algorithms, actually build them into JVMs. And I've got a pretty long history working with hardware, software, operating systems, virtual machines, uh, and, 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 and large scale systems uh, in Java across uh, distributed servers and networks and such. Um, I'm also a JCP executive committee member. Uh, this is actually being recorded uh, on the first day of the JCP EC face-to-face -face meeting here in Oracle. Um, and um, that's me. So um, looking at uh, this talk, we're going to focus on the JVM. Uh, Java 8 um, really brings changes to multiple parts of the Java SE platform. And I separate them looking at different parts. Uh, the language has some actual language changes in them. Uh, new syntax, new capabilities to express things. Uh, the JDK as a whole has a lot of new features uh, that include features in libraries, capabilities, new APIs, things that you can use. And then under this, there's the JVM that actually has to execute some of the code and needs to be able to do new things that weren't possible uh, before in previous JVM versions to support the new capabilities. Um, there, when we look at the JVM, there are things that are new required things that are part of Java SE8, new semantic changes to what a JVM needs to do. But there are also some implementation considerations that are specific to some implementations, like OpenJDK, the reference implementation for Java SE. And, and, um, and we'll touch in this talk on the things that are different in the JVM and some of the considerations, some highlights and considerations in specific implementations. So let's start with the semantic changes. What are the major semantic changes to the platform from a JVM point of view? Um, there aren't really that many. Uh, that's an interesting point. And probably the, the biggest and the most um, well discussed or publicized one uh, goes around uh, the support for Lambda expressions. Uh, the support for Lambda expressions and virtual methods, uh, virtual extension methods, is a new capability that JVM has to support in order to support a lot of the new features in the JDK that include things like uh, Lambda expressions in the, in the language syntax um, and many of the features in the JDK around parallel collections, um, stream APIs, and, and, and other things that the JDK makes heavy use of. Um, in addition to that major change, which comes in many forms in the JVM, uh, there's some other semantic changes. Uh, parameter reflection is one feature that Java 8 adds, where the ability to use reflection not just to uh, find fields or methods, but also to determine the names of parameters to methods uh, is a new feature that many people might find useful when they're mapping, um, uh, sort of parsing requests from various uh, um, uh, services into Java and trying to map parameters by name. Um, there's a type annotation um, uh, JSR that's implemented in Java 8 that adds some significant abilities to uh, and for annotating types and behaviors. And it's covered in a JSR of its own. Uh, you can look at the details for those. Uh, all three of these things actually add a requirement for a new class uh, format. So the, the Java SE8 class file format is updated to version 52, uh, which is new. Uh, Java 7 was version 51. And this new Java class format is supports uh, ways to express the, the features needed in these uh, three items. Um, if we look at some of the specifics, Lambda expressions are probably the, like I said, the, the biggest and, and most important change in this. Um, and, and they come in the form of um, a, a really support for a new syntax in the Java language, the ability to actually express lambdas. And in, in a lot of use of that support inside the core libraries in the JDK. So with Java 8, we're going to be seeing 
uh, collection libraries extend to be able to do parallel work. Um, we're going to see um, new APIs like the Stream API for expressing that kind of work with Lambda expressions, uh, basically saying do this to that in parallel or serial forms. Uh, and, and I'm not going to get into the details of those, but in order to uh, support this inside the JVM, there are new uh, implications. Um, specifically, there's a very heavy use of JSR 292, Invoke Dynamic, Method Handles, in the core JV JDK now um, within the code. Now, J JSR 292 was already supported as part of Java SC7, um, so there, there isn't really anything new semantically here for the JVM, but the fact that it is heavily used is going to impact the way people look at it from a cost uh, perspective, both for performance and for uh, footprint. Uh, in addition, there are some specifically new capabilities that were not available before Java 8. In Java 8, um, one of the very visible additions is the addition of um, default methods to interfaces, a capability that wasn't there in interfaces before. Interfaces before Java 8 are simply, uh, they define an interface but do not provide any implementation. And with Java 8, you can now provide default implementations to methods. Uh, this was driven by a careful and, and sort of trade-off type of choice. Um, looking at how to extend the existing APIs within the JDK, um, allowing people to keep using the same APIs, but extend them and add new capabilities to them. In order to do that, new methods needed to be added to interfaces. Um, the, the problem with adding new methods to interfaces that people already use is that you may not have an implementation for those methods, and default methods are there to really cover that uh, that's the primary goal. There are other reasons and, and uses for default methods as well. So this new capability puts a, a burden on JVM implementation of actually understanding these, parsing them, representing them correctly. And it, it, it is a, a significant change in surgery to the underlying way of how interfaces are represented, where methods come from, etc. Um, if we look at going beyond semantics and looking at performance, um, in, uh, in the JDK, the, there are um, uh, many, there are going to be many uses, both in the JDK itself and by users, of Lambda expressions. Java SC7 had the ability to use um, um, JSR 292 in its normal API forms, but there were no language features directly that would use them. And while there are certainly a lot of uh, pieces of code out there like uh, um, like Groovy and, and uh, JRuby and, and others that make use of Invoke Dynamic and JSR 292, regular Java code in, that people would express in regular Java typically didn't make use of it. With Java SC8, we expect that to change dramatically because we're going to see people writing Lambda expressions directly and they're, they're going to be using APIs that under the hood use them quite a bit in the JDK. So as a result, the performance of Lambda expressions becomes critical in SC8. And that translates into a lot of the work you're going to see under the hood uh, in the JVM. So specific things um, that, that we're going to be so seeing uh, done. Um, as a result of the need for higher performance, there was a complete rewrite of the implementation of method handles in the JVM as part of the Java SC8 effort. Um, method handles were... Uh, rewritten to, to be expressed in what is called Lambda forms. Uh, there's a JEP for that. There's a, a quite a bit of work that was put into that. And in fact, that work had been backported to later updates of Java 7 because it provides better performance, better stability, potentially better security around uh, uh, bugs and stuff like that. So this change is a pretty dramatic one. It shifts from implementing method handles as hardwired things in the JVM with assembly code implementations and such to moving most of that implementation into Java generated code that then the JIT compilers just compile like other code, recognize uh, the certain patterns that are needed to optimize there and provide both potentially better runtime optimizations, or not just potentially, a lot of better runtime optimizations, but also a cleaner implementation that tends to use Java's own safety for, the, for, for code stability within this implementation. Um, 
In addition to that, there have been changes to the JIT compilers themselves. Uh, one of the key things that method, uh, that method handles and, and Lambda forms need is very deep inlining when you find them because there, you end up with a fairly complex structure that ends up devolving in most cases to only a few instructions. So you want pretty deep inlining on, on these call sites, deeper than the typical JIT compiler heuristics would have done in the past. Um, as a result, there have been tweaks in specific implementations like OpenJDK to how inlining is done. Uh, late inlining or, or um, dynamic or incremental inlining has been added so that uh, once initial inlining is done and the compiler has been able to reduce the, 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 the graph to a, to a smaller level with some optimizations, additional inlining decisions are applied to try and force Lambda forms to inline uh, as much as possible. That is a critical capability for speed for Lambda forms, and without it, um, the performance of these things wouldn't have been nearly as good. So um, looking at some more implementation-specific notes, um, we have uh, additional uh, things that have changed. Um, we have, um, for example, OpenJDK adds um, much better verification error messages uh, for the verifier. Uh, in previous versions, if you tried to load in code that failed the verifier, uh, while the error messages were informative, they were informative mostly for people who knew how the verifier was built, not very useful for people generating bytecodes. <coughs> and in the new version, uh, the error messages are much better, hopefully good enough so that people can understand what's wrong with their bytecodes when they fail to verify and load. Um, in addition to that, we have dramatically improved intrinsic support for some things like atomics and fences. Um, for example, unsafe adds uh, direct support for additional atomic operations like uh, get and add or get and set. Um, now these are operations that have already been around through the atomic APIs in Java, but their implementation in previous releases uh, was often very inefficient because they would be running loops of compare and swaps over looking for failures and such. And while in some architectures that's still necessary, in architectures that have direct support for a swap instruction or an atomic increment instruction, um, that can be uh, reduced to a single instruction that runs much better. x86 uh, architectures are a good example of that. And as a result, uh, we get just better speed for atomics uh, once those are uh, translated into JDK as well. Um, in, in addition to that, um, we have uh, uh, additional unsafe um, uh, intrinsics built for fencing, memory ordering, uh, so that you can apply ordering in certain code without having to uh, apply actual operations. So for example, you can fence and order loads, previous loads against future loads and stores without actually needing to do a volatile store or a volatile load in, in, in order to achieve that. Um, the fencing APIs that were added are specifically in the unsafe section, which is unsafe. Uh, as far as I know, those have not yet been exposed in actual uh, pure Java form with Java fencing APIs, but those will hopefully come in the future. Um, and in addition to this, we have uh, you know little things like leveraging CPU instructions directly for encryption purposes, and, and that's, that has obvious performance implications in certain parts. Um, looking at some more performance or sp uh, implementation specific features, um, we have, um, <coughs> let's see, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just checking my own notes here. Uh, we have new in interesting uh, annotations that are very useful, but are currently used only internally within the JDK. There's an at stable annotation that allows uh, code that is trusted uh, to specifically uh, declare that a variable is going to become stable and not changing and allows certain levels of constant folding or constant propagation from that point on. Um, this is specifically only allowed right now in trusted code because there could be dangerous implications for using it in untrusted code and in generic code. Uh, another feature that there's a JP4 and is included in Java 8, in Java SC8 for OpenJDK, is an at contended annotation. This annotation is intended to allow 
control over memory layout and cache layout so that uh, heavily contended fields could be could avoid the false sharing effect that often creates bottlenecks on concurrent algorithms. Uh, this again is currently available only within the JDK. Either, as far as I know, there's a flag that allows you to use it in general code, but that's an optional flag. Um, and this will hopefully become available more generically in the future because um, while there's just concern around whether the implementation is secure, there are no strong security implications to using this if the implementation actually does match it well. Uh, for people who are interested in concurrency and performance for concurrency, this is a very powerful feature. Um, looking last at, um, at uh, some of the additional uh, features we're looking at, um, there is a big change in OpenJDK and the reference implementation around the permanent generation. This is a removal of the perm gen uh, from the JDK and a replacement of it with um, with uh, some, w with basically a, a, a different form or a different memory for use uh, for the kind of things that used to sit in a perm gen. Um, this new meta space is expected to alleviate some of the problems that people have seen over the years with perm gen pressure, either because perm gen was a fixed size and you couldn't run out of that size and then your application might crash because it ran out of room for classes, or because of garbage collection, thrashing, or pressure that would occur as a result. And uh, this new meta space that we're going to see in Java SC8 has a different behavior for PermGen than historically was around. Um, one of the big pressures for this is not just the existence of it, current applications that create and remove classes on the fly, because this is a normal thing that, that, that happens, but as a result of the Lambda uh, expressions and, and the Lambda form work, we expect to see more dynamic generation of Java code and as a result a stronger pressure on the perm gen, which increased the reason to deal with it and to deal with it smoothly in Java 8. Um, so um, it, it, it is important to understand why this is done and also what the effect is. Um, there will be a new meta space. This new meta space is going to be separately collected and managed, but the hope is that that meta space will not be um, as bad for garbage collection behavior as we've seen before. With that in mind, um, I'll note that this perm gen removal is not something that is part of the Java SE8 platform definition, and it's an optional or not necessarily, it's, it's an implementation choice as opposed to a specification choice. And while OpenJDK and the reference implementation are choosing to do that, uh, there are other examples like Azul's uh, Zing JVM that actually don't have that need because the perm gen has already been implemented in an elastic uh, configuration free and pause free way before. Um, so looking at it from a summary point of view, um, there are lots of things that are new in Java SE8. Um, languages, libraries, and the JVM are changing. Um, a lot of the changes are at the layers that are not the JVM, and the JVM has some specific things that are fairly incremental and fairly small. They're changing specifically to support Java SE8. Um, so these are not huge uh, steps. Uh, there are a lot of things around semantics. There are some things around semantics, but a lot of work around performance in there. And um, what we're going to be um, seeing is um, um, there in JVM implementations in general is um, not just the semantic changes and the performance related changes, but other performance or changes that are not tied to SC8 appearing with the SC8 release simply because it's a good release vehicle for any major change. Probably the perm gen removal is a really good example of that. You don't want to make that kind of change happen in a minor tweak or an update because it's a it is an operational change to how the release is managed, but it's not necessarily tied to any specification need in the, in the release. So um, with, with that, um, that covers pretty much the changes I have to talk about those. And, and um, you know, being from Azul, I just you know, ask you guys to come look at our site, see what we do in JVMs, because we're pretty active in this space, releasing our own JVMs and our own versions of commercialized OpenJDK as well. Thank you.